Amen. I would like to invite you into the Word of God today, to the Gospel of St. Matthew for our, for our assignment, for our text. Um, you know, this year, 2023, God has given me a bold message for the church. I've asked Him, I said, Lord, I, I fall into a style of preaching usually and I'm, I'm looking now for having hope to those that are hopeless, to healing to those that are broken and fragmented. That has been the ministry that I have always had. But yet, God has put an urgency on my heart today and this year because the church, I believe, is being lulled to sleep. The church is going to lose its very structure and its effect if we're not careful today. And more than that, we're going to lose our children and our families and our marriages because the devil is who the devil always was. In the Garden of Eden, he was the most subtle of all creatures, the Bible said. And I've had people argue with me that have to understand the Bible and say, how could the devil be a snake and all that kind of thing? Here's the key about the devil. He showed up in the garden like he belonged there. And that's what the devil still does today. He'll come into church every Sunday like he belongs here. He'll come into your workplace like he belongs there. He, he'll fit in with society. He's the most subtle of all creatures, but he is still the devil. And without the Word of God as our guide, without the Word of God as our plumb line, we can get lost and we can get caught up. And so I want to take a text today and I'm going to get going because I, I, I don't want to keep you. I know it's a little warm in here, but I have a message. Let's go to the Gospel of, of Matthew chapter 11. And I'll begin at verse 1. Now our text today, the pretext. Remember when we studied the Word of God, we have to have the pretext, the context, and the posttext. We, we have to understand where this is coming from. John the Baptist now, with the Elijah anointing, went before the Lord, proclaiming, makes straight the path of the Lord. He came to... Uh, as a prelude to the coming of Jesus. He came as an uh, intermediary between the Old Testament law and the New Testament in Jesus Christ. And, and he preached a bold message. He confronted Herod the king because Herod had taken his brother's wife and married her. Now see, you don't have to go through too many novels in the world to find out all the craziness that's going on. It's all in the Bible. Herod took Herodias, his brother's wife, and married her. And the Apostle Paul, or I'm sorry, John confronted him about that. And Herod was uh, related to John. There was something about the anointing in John's life. You know, if you have the anointing of God on your life, it will talk to people. You don't have to be an eloquent speaker. You don't have to look the part. You just have to have the anointing of God in your life. Herod uh, took note of what John said. He didn't want to uh, harm him, yet Herodias, she was all upset because he preached that to her. And she waited for a time that she might destroy him. And there came a time in a birthday party that Herod had, and Herodias' daughter, he had her come out, and danced before him half-dressed. And he got so enamored in that girl that he, that he told her up to a half of his kingdom, I will give you. Just ask it. And the mother controlled the daughter. And the daughter said, I want the head of John the Baptist. John now is thrown into jail. John, the man that preached the gospel. John, the man that wore, uh, ate locusts and wore camel hair. John was a, a rough man. He was down at the Jordan baptizing. This is John the Baptist. Now he's in jail waiting to be beheaded. Let's pick up in Matthew chapter 11. 
And it came to pass, when Jesus had made end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Jesus now had sent out the twelve disciples to go out, and he gave them power against all unclean things. He, he told them that they could heal the sick and open the blind eyes. He gave them that power, and he said, Go out into all the cities, and if they receive you, stay. And let your blessing be upon you. But if they refuse you, shake the dust off your sandals and move on. He said it would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah for that city. And so the disciples are out. Now Jesus is commanding his twelve disciples. And he goes to preach. And now when John had heard in prison the words of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. John hears it and he sends his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, Whosoever shall not be offended in me. Let us pray for the anointing on the word of God. Father, I thank you today for this life. God, your word. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Father, it is truth, it is life. Take us now to that place, past our place of understanding, to a place of revelation. And talk with each one of us, God. We bring different needs. We're all broken in a different way. But Father, touch us today. And let us know that wherever we've been, whatever we've done, and El Calvario Vencio, Calvary covered it all. Help me now, Lord. Give me lips of a learned man for a brief time and remove me at the first convenience. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' matchless name. Some beloved Jesus said, Amen. You know, here's this great John the Baptist, but while he's in prison, he began to have some doubts that worked against his faith and made him question the work and the person of Jesus. If we're honest today, there are things that happen in our life from time to time that make us wonder, where are you, God? Are you really there? Do you really hear my prayer? God, why haven't you answered my prayer? Is this Bible really? Am I serving? Am I investing my life for nothing? Is this really going to pay off? I think we have to be honest with each other. There are times in our life where we even get to a place, if we're not careful, where we say, you know, it's enough of this. Some have fallen back. We say in the church it's called backslidden. The Bible said it's like a backslidden heifer. Have you ever been out on a farm, he uses an agricultural term, and you try to pull a heifer that doesn't want to come, they go back, they slide back, and it's backslidden is what we are. We fall away, we give up on God. And remember, when Martha and Mary came with Jesus, and the Bible said that their brother Lazarus was the one that Jesus loved, but he had died and he was in a tomb four days. And Mary was the one that didn't come out to see him. She was upset. Martha came, but Mary was upset. She was pouting. And when she finally came to Jesus, he said, take me now to where your faith stopped. Take me to the tomb where they laid Lazarus. Take me to that place where your faith stopped. I want to challenge somebody today. You might be going through a difficult time in your life. But don't give up. Don't give up on God. You've got to hang in and remember to everything there's a season, right? No season lasts forever. If it's a bad season, hold on because you're going to come through. If your dream is in some tomb someplace and you think that dream that God has given you is a lie, I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. If God gave you that dream, he can still bring it to pass. He can revive it again. He said to Mary, take me now to that place where your faith stopped. Don't give up on God. John now 
had these doubts. And you know, God's a big God. He's not intimidated by our questions. So if you're there today, I've had doubts at times. I have learned in all things to hold on. I have lived long enough serving the Lord to know that if He did it then, He can do it again. I've lived long enough to know that if I hang on, He's going to bring it to pass. It might not be the way I want it to be. It might not be the timing that I had in mind. But I know that He has a plan for me. I know that He loves me with unfailing love. And I've got to hang on. Amen? <clears throat> and if you're in a really good season, work it. Come on, work it. Work that thing. For my young people today, your hair doesn't get messed. You can get up in the morning, just... It works. Work that thing. Because no season lasts forever. Amen. Now I get up and I, everything's going, everything going the wrong way. But here's John. Great men are not at their greatest all the time. Remember there's an old cliche. You, you never want to meet your heroes. Have you ever heard that cliche? You don't want to meet your heroes. Um, I'd rather have somebody online looking at me and saying, oh, yeah, I like Pastor Michael. You, you probably don't want to meet me. You know, I'm just this regular guy, stumble around, and my wife knows me. So that makes her all the more an angel, I think. Because <laughs> Paul reminds us that we have been given this treasure of Jesus Christ, but he reminds us that it was given to us in earthen vessels. Come to church. Don't put your hope in man. Put your hope in God. And a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Let me say that again. A faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Peter said it this way, that the trial of your faith, which is much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried by fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is not intimidated by your questions. And I want to tell you today that when you come to Him, honesty works with God. Can you say amen? I mean, you've got to be honest with Him because He already knows anyway. The disciples came up to Jesus and He said, Are you the one? Are you really the one? Or do we look for another? John had gave his whole life for Jesus. He's about ready to be beheaded. You know, it's different when you're coming to the end. John's, the, the fate is set for John. The deal's over. He's going to die for this man. He's going to die for Jesus. And he sent his disciples and he said, Are you the one? Or do we look for another? And Jesus answered. He said, go tell John again. You see, we look past that. We look at, go tell John that the blind eyes, uh, that the blind receive sight, that the lame walk, that the lepers are cleansed, that the deaf hear, that the dead are raised up, and the gospel is preached to the poor. That's really cool. But you look at the first part of that, and he said, go tell John Again, I've come to tell somebody again to hold on. Jesus is coming. There's one God and there's one mediator between man and God. The man Christ Jesus and He's coming back and He's going to right the world. Go tell John again. And he said, and blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. I always went past that a lot. I, you know, I, just, I, I memorized it, but I, I just went past it. But you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ was scandalous. Yeah, it was scandalous. Jesus was born of a mother that had no earthly father. That was scandalous. She wasn't married and she was with child. That was scandalous. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. That was scandalous. He even, he even didn't deny it when they said He was God. That was scandalous. But he said, my word and my works speak for themselves. I've come to tell somebody, if he did it before, 
He can do it again. If He can do it for me, He can do it for you. You see, that's what happens when you walk with the Lord long enough. You realize that, hey, if He did it for Chris, He'll do it for me. Because He's no respecter of persons. He loves Chris as a son. He loves me as a son. And He doesn't have a problem. He doesn't have these favorites. We are a child of God or we are not. But we, like John, if we're not careful, can get caught up in thinking that we have to build the kingdom of God. But in reality, we're really day laborers. We're hired hands. We're just called to work in the field. That's all I'm called to do, is to be a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can't heal you. I can't repair what's broken in your life. I can't build this church, but I can tell you what thus saith the Lord. You see, if I do that, the blood is not on me. If you don't listen to me today, if you walk out, you have heard and you stand without defense one day. But I've come to tell you that God loves you with an unfailing love. And he, no matter what the Word of God says to you, if you can humble yourself and receive it, the first thing you remember is that God loves you. He died for you. You are incredibly valuable in His sight. He has allowed all this going on in the world today because He loves people. He's long-suffering, willing that none should perish. He waited 29 years of my life to save me. So I get going now and say, come Lord Jesus, the world's a mess. There are still some people out there, there are still some people in this church today that are not saved. Jeremiah said the summer is past, the harvest is over, and we are not yet saved. I want to tell you today, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And if you don't understand what born again is, you say, I'm, I, I don't know if I am or not. You're not probably but it doesn't take any act to do that. It just takes obedience. Humble yourself. Don't you leave the church today not knowing whether you're saved or not. He said later on in the text, Jesus said to the son, what did you come to see? What did you go out into the wilderness to see? He said you went out to see John the Baptist the first time. What did you go out there for? Did you go out to see a man, uh, a reed shaken in the wind? You know, John wasn't the guy that was shaken by public opinion. We live in a time, though, that men, the Bible said, will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap unto themselves false teachers having itching ears, and then the Bible said they'll be turned unto a fable. We have to be careful today that we don't go just to a church because we like just what he preaches. Some place you get some mail that has an electric bill. Can you say amen? Some place... It sticks. Some place you don't like it. Some place it hurts a little bit because God is trying to tell us that if we continue on in that way in our life, there is a consequence. We can never break the Word of God. You can only violate it. And if you violate it, it breaks you. All God's laws are that way. The God, Bernoulli's principle of lift, for those of you that fly an airplane. You can't break that law. You can violate it. And if you violate it, that plane will crash. Because you will not have lift. So when God tells us some things, He tells it to us because He loves us. He wants us to change our lives. You say, well, I'm okay, I'm okay with this dating and being very promiscuous. You know, I'm trying to have safe sex and all that. That's not going to work out. Some place you're going to be broken emotionally. Some place it's going to come back. It just doesn't work out, Kaaba Church. God doesn't, doesn't give you His laws so that you won't have fun. He gives them to you so that you can have fun. The Bible said that there's one bed that is undefiled with the Lord, and that's the marriage bed. That's the only one. Everything else is defiled. And so when God gives us these guidelines, today we see a very promiscuous society. 
We have people that don't know what love is. They're trying to make love. You don't make love. You make whoopee, right? <laughs> well, come on. That whoopee was designed for the marriage. It was designed to have a soul tie. It was designed to knit you together as one. The two have become one flesh. What God has joined together, let not man separate. That's why it was made that way. Why? Because when you try to rip that out, guess what? No heart breaks even. If you ever had a broken heart, it doesn't break even. you ever been, I hate the term, kids would always say, oh, well, I dumped her, Dad. I hate that term. If you're the dumper, I guess it's okay, but when you're the dumpy, that's not so good, right? You get wounded. Come to church. God loves us. He said, I didn't see a man, a reed shaking in the wind. You didn't see a, John the Baptist wasn't a preacher that was swayed by public opinion. He wasn't worried about getting canceled today. I'm not worried about getting canceled today. First of all, I'm too old and I don't care. But second of all, I love you. People said, hey, pastor, your messages this year are a little bit strong. Better be careful. The devil's coming after you. I said, no, you got that wrong. Devil's not coming after me. He's coming after you. And he's put me in the middle to stand in the gap for you. That's exactly what's happening. John was beheaded for preaching the truth. To my young pastors and young people today, beware when all men speak well of you. There's going to be somebody that's going to come after you. But I want you now as I bring this in, I've come with a burden on my heart today. And I want to know, will you be the one that will stand in the gap. God said, I sought for a man among them that should make up a hedge, a wall of righteousness, and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Do you understand that God is going to deal with sin? And He will deal with those that are not saved, He will separate the sheep from the goats. Now He loves you. He loves your children. He loves your family. Enough to die for them. But there is coming a time when He comes back. Well, they will be His enemy. The Bible said when He comes back, He won't come back on a cult of peace like He left on the Holy Week. He'll come back on a stallion of war. His vesture dipped in blood. Lord of lords and King of kings. He said he'll consume them with the sword of his spirit and destroy them with the brightness of his coming. The blood will run as high as a horse's bridle. 200 furlongs. 200 miles long in the valley of Jezreel when he comes back. He's going to deal with it. He hears every child's whimper. He sees and hears the cry of every abused, sexually abused child and man and woman. He hears it all. He sees what's going on, and yet he holds back his wrath and allows us to have grace. Kawa Church, the first thing you must do is evangelize your family. Moms and dads, you need to get your kids into Kawa Church. Or get them into some good church. I've said this a hundred times. I had a drug problem when I was young. My mom drugged me to church every Sunday. Amen. <laughs> you need to get them up. You don't ask them. Do you want to go, honey? Come on, let me be old. But I mean, listen, someplace you've got to learn from those that have gone on. That wasn't the way it was when I grew up. And if I dragged it too far, I got a good kick to get it going a little bit faster. But I can tell you one thing, when they, when they did it to me when I was five, I never had to worry about doing it again. Don't wait till they're 25. 
children are the most important thing to their parents. Can I get an amen from parents? They are the most endearing joy in life, even when they do wrong. It's been said, you are as happy as your unhappiest child. Did I get an amen? This is the way it is. I thought when I got 18, Laura and I were woohoo. It doesn't work that way. But I want to talk about the sex and human trafficking of tens of thousands, tens of thousands of children. It is a hundred and fifty billion dollar industry. It makes more money than the entire airline industry. My heart breaks for our children today being taught confusion and being left to raise themselves and make decisions they are not prepared to make. My heart breaks for the tens of thousands of children that are caught into sex and human trafficking. It's time that the church wakes up and takes its authority. There is a new sexual orientation that is being pushed by the mainstream media. The acronym is MAPS, Minor Attracted Persons. That was a pervert when I grew up. That's an acronym that they want to be protected. The Western Hemisphere, countries of the United States and Canada, are among the top destinations for human trafficking and among the largest consumers of child sex. It was told that children are much more valuable than drugs. They're more valuable than cocaine. They're more valuable than fentanyl. And this Trafficker said, because you can sell the same child ten times a day for ten years. Don't sit there and say, oh, pastor, this is disturbing me. It should disturb you. That's the land we live in. That's the time we live in. I want to know. God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Ezekiel's testimony was was. Terrible. God said, I looked for this man so I would not destroy them. And there was none. Can somebody get a burden? The problem is, it's just something we read about. Could be your kids, your grandkids. What happens if you had to go home at night and see one empty bed, wondering where that child was, how he was being sold ten times a day, that's what's going on in our world today. So I've turned this. They asked Jesus, are you the one, Jesus? He said, yeah, go back and tell them the blind receive their sight. The lepers are cleansed. The dead are raised up and the gospels preached to the poor. I am the one, he said. I want to know today, are you the one? What difference are you going to make? Well, Pastor, I just liked it in Sunday. We had every Sunday. Oh, I like the praise band. We had a lot. What difference are you the one that will stand in the gap? I have no problem standing in the gap for this church. I love this church. People said, are, are you worried about the devil coming after you? I said, you know something? He's not coming after me. He's coming after you. And I will stand in the gap. I'll be the messenger for you. But I want to know today. Are you the one? What are you the one for? You are the one for something. You are the one for something. Don't live this life with only your accomplishment of something you did in this life. I'll tell you what, you're giving it all back. Come before Jesus someday and say, here I am, Lord. I stood in the gap for you. It might cost you your life. Anybody here heard of Elon Musk? 
Elon Musk uh, did okay in the business world. Can you say amen? Designed and Tesla and SpaceX and I mean the guy is brilliant. Uh, not defend, I'm not saying all about him, but I'm saying he's a brilliant man. But he is also the wealthiest man in the world. He's got it all. Or if he doesn't, he can buy it all. And they were asking him, they were talking to him, and here's the world. The world's saying, aren't you worried, Elon, because you've been a little bit outspoken about some things? You stood up and taken a stand against some things? Aren't you worried about getting canceled? I hate that term. Is somebody in here so worried about getting canceled? Is your God so weak that you're worried about the devil canceling you out? Why don't you stand up and let God be strong in your life? He said, he said, aren't you worried about offending them and your businesses losing money? Elon Musk, if you watch the thing on YouTube, he hesitated for a long time. He thought about it. And he said, offer me money. Offer me power. He said, I don't care. I'll say what I want to say. And if the consequences are losing money, so be it. You see, he found out what money can do. Sad thing about money is you've got to have a little bit of it to find out what it can't do. It can't do some things. Poverty can't do, can't do nothing. So don't wish yourself to be poor. But I want to know today, will you stand in the gap for God? If He asks you to stand in the gap, does it have to fit your agenda? Are you the one? Stand to your feet. We have the praise band come and play a song. I want you to focus today. God brought you here. You sat on that hard chair. You fanned yourself because it's hot. But God spoke to you today. As they sing this song, I want you to ponder that. I don't want you to forget about it. If you've got to write it down, ask your neighbor for the pen and write it down. Because God brought us here for a reason today. And as they sing this song, if you're not born again, if you want prayer for some reason, if you've got some reason that you need to talk with God and you'd like someone to pray with you and help you, I want you to come forward during this song. We have a prayer team that will pray with you. If you're not born again, don't let the devil make you feel funny. Like, I don't know, I guess I must be. My dad was. No, you don't. Just come up if he's talking to your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't you leave. I'm the messenger today for you, Kaba Church. You might say, well, I'm going to go home and read the Bible and I'll come next Sunday. No, you might not have next Sunday. If today you've heard his voice, We'll pray with you. We'll welcome you into the kingdom. It's not a confessional. It's just a willingness to come to the Lord in repentance and ask Him into your life. So as I play this song, if that's you today, if you need prayer or anything, please come right now. We have a prayer team waiting for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bruce and Shelley.
Come on, church. You never stop. You never stop. He doesn't quit. Come on. Yes, Lord, we love you today. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Yes, Lord. That is who you are. Hallelujah, Lord. We make the miracle worker. Yes, give God 
praise in the house. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. He's, you know something? We just got to give him some stupid, crazy praise again right now. Lift up your hands and give God praise in the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. It's our time. If not now, when? If not you, who? He's looking for somebody to stand in the gap for our children, for our families, for our churches. Will it be you? Come to church, be strong because God is with you. Be fast. It's our season together and no season lasts forever. And be wise because the enemy of your soul waits for you outside the store. He wants to rob this message from your heart. But here's the good news in Jesus Christ. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're blessed because you're highly favored. Give God praise and glory and make a difference with your life. Amen. God bless you.